The QED Kitchen is going global for the next cooking marathon around the world in 80 recipes. Talk about going global. Hi, everybody. I'm Chris Fenimore, and uh, welcome back into the kitchen. Uh, today, we are really celebrating uh, a wide variety of international cuisines. We have put together a brand new cookbook. It's called Around the World in 80 Recipes, but in reality, there are more than 150 recipes from about 10 or 12 different countries, uh, and they are the recipes that we identify with those countries. So this is a great sort of primer for uh, expanding your cuisine, and it's a great way to uh, treat your friends and family, and we're going to tell you how you can get a copy of this brand new cookbook. But as always, what I like to do right away is to start cooking right here in the kitchen. I have uh, t with me today, come on in here, Joe. Um, those of you who watch the shows, you know, this is my son, Joseph, uh, uh, who is here. And, and he, you know, he's, uh, he's, he's a little scruffy looking. And I, and I said, uh, we ought to explain that you're getting ready for a high school production of... Um, Fiddler on the Roof. Oh, I thought, it, I, thought, <laughs> I thought it was you were playing Shaggy and Scooby-Doo and meets the, <laughs> the ghost pirates or something. No, it's, uh, okay. So you're going to be, nope. you're gonna be uh, Perchick in, in, um, yeah. in the production. So he's got to get into part into character and, and so on it's coming up right so when we were thinking about doing a recipe for asia uh right away i knew what we had to make we have to make our dumplings because joe and i love dumplings they were the first uh, it was the first asian cuisine i had ever had uh yeah. back when we went to the Sichuan house in Squirrel Hill. Right, there was a little restaurant that we used to go to uh, about once a week, and Joe started eating spicy food and dumplings. And then I found out we could actually make these babies. So <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna make uh, these are uh, pork dumplings. You can make there's all kinds of fillings once you get the basic technique down. You got to have one of these babies uh, or two. Uh, yeah. <laughs> these are steamers, and they really give that kind of authenticity. Although these can be steamed anywhere. Yeah. But what we're gonna make is a savory. Uh, filling for it. So what we have here is a, a pound of ground pork to which, Joe, I, you want to add some seasonings, right? All right. Um, I want you to add the uh, soy sauce. The, um, there's about a tablespoon of that, a tablespoon of seasoned rice wine vinegar, and a teaspoon of sesame oil. And while you do that, I'm going to chop up some scallion to go in there. And um, when, I, when, I use, when I do this recipe, I Take off just the tips of the of the end of the scallion, and put the whole thing in there, the the white part and the green part. And I don't know why. It, I guess maybe you liked the dumplings because they reminded you of raviolis, or I don't, I don't know. know. I think the idea that it was kind of like pasta <laughs> back, back when pasta was about the only thing I ate uh, appealed to me. Right, you were familiar with it at least, and. Um, and, you know, there are so many international cuisines that involve putting things inside of noodles and then cooking yeah. them. There's pierogies, there's raviolis, there's dumplings. It's really sort of um, almost universal. I'm going to mince up some garlic and some, what I love, is the um, ginger. Oh, yeah. Mmm. And just, I want, it, I want it to really be fine so that all the flavors spread throughout. Okay, so I'm going to do my knife on the board trick. You can start mixing this, actually, Joe. All right. And once we I decided on a fork to mix these, uh, just because we think it might uh, help things to mix together a little better. Yeah. You want to make sure that all of those uh, spices get on all of the meat. All right, now I have this nice minced garlic. And if you can, I always suggest using fresh ginger. Fresh ginger has a totally different flavor than, um, you know, um, powdered ginger. And I'm just going to take the outside skin off of this. And you can find this now. You can find it in all kinds of supermarkets. It's, it's pretty common. And uh, how's that coming? Pretty good, yeah. I think. All right. So I'm going to make a little slice of this. And the same thing, the, um, the ginger is sort of fibrous. And so if you sort of pound down on it, then you can take your knife 
and break it up into smaller pieces so it gets distributed well. Uh -huh. Boy, that smells terrific already, and I think yeah. it's because of the sesame uh, oil. I love that yeah. toasted sesame oil, aroma, flavor, everything about it. We always wish that we that in your television at home you could smell what's going on here. <laughs> That's right. Would enhance the experience. Now, I'm sure that, you know, in, in, a, in an Asian family, they probably make their own dumpling skins, as they call them. And we do, too, sometimes. Yes, we have done it, but it's a real pain in the neck compared to being able to just buy a stack of these things. And you usually will find them in the supermarket in the um, uh, section near the vegetables. Oh, speaking of vegetables, we're going to add some cabbage to this. Um, just let me have a couple of leaves. And while I chop this up, well, that's, that'll be enough. Okay. Um, if you would line the, um, the, the basket with some cabbage leaves, we'll be able to um, make sure that the things don't stick in there, okay? All right. So I'm just going to stack all these things up. And uh, obviously, again, the same thing with the garlic and the ginger. I want things in fairly small pieces so it gets evenly and well distributed into that pork mixture. And this is that you can use any kind of cabbage. I like to use the Napa cabbage or the Savoy cabbage. And I get it at the same Asian market where I buy the wonton skins or the dumpling skins as we call them. Mm -hmm. All right. Nice and fine. And this way, I can feel like we're getting our vegetables and our meat at the same time. Yep. <laughs> a little bit of vegetables in there. All right. So that's the way you, uh, you um, just line the, 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 so that when you put the dumplings in, they won't stick. You can move that over here, Joe. Okay. Because um, I'm going to start, I'm going to start making some of these. And what you can do is, you can start making the dipping sauce. Um, one of the great things about dumplings is, is uh, dipping them in some kind of sauce. We use peanut sauce sometimes. Um, yeah. But I know you like this sort of uh, tangy um, sauce that, that we make. It'll work up here, Joe. Okay. Yeah, this kind of sauce is the kinds that you often find in uh, Chinese restaurants. Yes. When they say uh, dumpling sauce, this is what they pretty much mean, the dipping sauce. Sometimes we put um, chopped up water chestnuts in our uh, pork dumplings, too. So that's some nice, rich soy sauce that you're putting in there, right? Mm -hmm. All right, now here I, I'm going to, you keep mixing. <laughs> All right. The way I, I like to make these is that I just take uh, one of the dumpling wrappers and I put water with the tip of my finger around half of it, and then I just take a little bit of the meat mixture, put it in the center, you fold it over and touch the center, and then it's a matter, you can just press it together, but I like to make little pleats in it because that's the way they look when you get them in the restaurant. So that is one dumpling. Yeah, and like a lot of these kinds of foods, it's pretty labor intensive. Um, uh, but, but it's worth it. But it's worth it. And if, and if you're sitting around um, with members of your family, like your son, um, and you take parts in this, it's really not so bad. You'll see. Okay, so already we have. I have plenty of red pepper flakes. Two, in there, oh, so you're adding. Just, oh, it's just us, right? Yeah, yeah right. It's just us, so. Uh, never mind all the people who are here volunteering wow. who are going to want to <laughs> taste this, but. Um, so you, you, um, you know, you continue making these. On New Year's Eve, the tradition in many Chinese families is to sit around as a family and make dumplings, make as many dumplings as they possibly can. And then just at midnight, uh, when the New Year strikes, when we're usually drinking champagne, guess what they're doing? Eating they're eating dumplings. They're smart. And, you know, if you make a big batch of them and you, you know, you don't end up eating all of them in one run, you can freeze them once they're like this. Right. And they'll keep for a long while. Well, and that is exactly what uh, Joey and I do. When we make these, we make a lot. Um, there's usually about 50 
um, of those skins in a package, and we'll make a hundred dumplings. <laughs> Easily make a hundred dumplings, and um, and then you just put them on a flat sheet, and put them in the freezer, and in you know a very short period of time they harden up enough that you can take them off that sheet, put them in a plastic bag, put them back in the freezer, and then they are in, like individually flash frozen. All right, Joe, if you want to put those yeah. onto um, the, um, the steamer, and again, right, it, those are lined with the cabbage, cabbage leaves, and um, you know, we'd fill it up, and you put the cover yep. on that. And let me just clear the deck here a little bit because we have been steaming some that I made earlier. Yeah. Fortunately, you don't have to sit here and watch us make <laughs> 30 dumplings. But <laughs> Okay. Oh, oh yeah. Good. And I always, uh, you know, it's one of those things because it is pork meat. I want to make sure that it is properly cooked. And so I'm just going to take its temperature. And what oh. temperature are they good? Well, you'd certainly want them to be about 180 degrees or more. Those are almost 200 degrees, so they are well cooked. You got a little plate there, Joe? Yes, I do. Oh, boy. All right. And a fork. And I suppose we should be taking these out with chopsticks or something, but... <laughs> um, I never really got good at using chopsticks. No, huh? All right, so those are for you. You got All another right. plate over there, huh? Yes, I do. Yeah, well... <laughs> You're not alone. <laughs> okay. All right. They are delicate. Mm. Whoop, that one fell apart. Wasn't on the... They're so tender. Got to have a taste of this. And a little bit of the sauce. I love the way that the, the, the wrappers get almost a little translucent. Yeah. That's so nice. They're hot, though. Be careful. Mm. Those are hot noodles. Oh, those are good. Mmm. I, I love it when you can actually, you know, you, that you enjoy something in a restaurant, mm -hmm. but you can go home and make it for yourself, and then you could make lots, you know, and yeah. you, don't have to, you, can, you can make however much you want. Exactly right. Well, this is just one of over 150 international recipes that are available in our brand new cookbook, Around the World in 80 Recipes. This represents the, the Asian uh, contingent, but there are lots more Asian things, including General Tso's chicken is in here. And Joe, it's always a pleasure to work with you in the kitchen. And it's always nice to be here. It won't be the last time today that we're working because we got to still make dinner, you know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so now here's your chance to get the cookbook and, uh, and I know you'll enjoy these recipes.